thank you so much again for, for coming in. Yeah, really, no really do appreciate it. Um, and again, I think just to kind of start, I really just want this to be a forum for you to be able to explain what led you to this decision to, to resign and what brought us here today. Um, obviously, um, the decision to resign was an easy one. It's something that, you know, it, it happened. Um, but I think in you know, the last couple of years, the district and I have been, I should say, different, different systems of values or different lines of thinking. Um, I've fought a lot of battles for my, for my players, for the children that I coach and work with, and for my coaching, my staff as well. And you know, a couple of different times we'd win some, we'd lose some, and it just became a struggle. And then when the final straw hit was you know, when, they, when they suspended the quarterback, and I thought the punishment that they gave was way too harsh, way too sudden, way too quick, without fully investigating everything. So, you know, I talked to people, I tried to reach out, I, you know, spoke briefly um, and waited for a call back from the superintendent. We spoke briefly, he, you know, never, never got a call back, left messages for other, other district administrators, never got phone calls back. And, and so with that, it just kind of made me think, you know what, I could keep going. I could just, you know, accept it as is, put my head in the sand and, and just trudge forward. Or I could finally say, you know what, it's time to make a stand and, and do something. And that's what I decided to do. When did you make that decision? Oh, probably Friday morning um, after a long evening of spending time talking with my wife um, and, and us going through things and, and talking back and forth about, you know, the importance of, you know, drawing attention to not just that we have to look at the, the behaviors of kids, we gotta look at the mental health and what the effects are of different consequences and how things have changed in, in our society in the last three, four years. And we gotta look more at the, the mental health as well as ki of kids. When you were discussing this with your wife, you know, all, all night, I'm sure, yeah. what did she say and what was part of that conversation? Well, you know, it helps that she's, a, she's an administrator as a vice principal in a different school district. And, you know, she, we talked about, you know, what she thought consequences would be for the actions or um, vice versa and just, just to, and how they would handle it or how she thought, she, you know, things would be done. And also just, you know, we talked about, you know, stressing the idea of, of the mental health and about, you know, what the, what the kids would be going through and, and what's going to happen to them and, you know, making sure they feel stable enough and strong enough to continue after this. Camino is a big deal, you think about it. It is. Now, this is just background so that I have this. When did you alert the district that you were resigning? I told my athletic director Friday morning, and then I sent out a email to the superintendent, to my athletic director, and the board of ed probably around 12.30 in the afternoon. When you, before you made this decision, when you were trying to get in contact with administrators and all mm -hmm. the people that you previously mentioned, what was the response, if any? Um, it was, you know, the, they have the rules are in place. This is what the, the code of conduct or the, the handbook says needs to be done. So that's what we're going to do. And again, I know every school obviously has a code of conduct, so there's certain things mm -hmm. they wanted to follow. I know we can't necessarily talk about the specifics of what it was that actually happened that led to the suspension. Mm -hmm. But in your eyes, why was this punishment too harsh? Um, I just think... I'm sorry, I'm just thinking a little bit. I, I just, I think this is more of a matter that needs to be, I think it should have, I'm not, it should have been dealt with in terms of more of a thorough investigation of families being involved with discussions and thing along, things along those lines prior. How do you know that the thorough investigation that you would have thought that this suspension warranted didn't take place? Because I believe it happened over within a half hour, 45 minute period from when things took place. I mean, I could be wrong, and don't judge me exactly on those times, but it was pretty quick. You mean quick in between the time it happened and the time the suspension yes, occurred? Yes, correct. Okay, just because I do think this is pertinent information as far as the, um, I guess what, what had occurred, but also what they were able to look into during that time. Do you happen to know if whatever did occur someone had a first-hand account of or someone actually saw or witnessed with their own eyes or was it just something that was heard 
Well, you know what I'm saying? I'm not really sure. Those, I, you know, all the details and everything's limited on what you can discuss educational law wise. So I got to kind of stay away from that one. Understood. When you tell your team, you alert your team mm -hmm. that this is the decision that you are going to make, what do they say? Um, they kind of looked at me in shock. There was silence at first because I went into the locker room and spoke with them. Um, you know, but through our discussions, you know, they understood. They knew what had happened um, in terms of the quarterback being suspended. And, you know, we went through as much as 13, 14, 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds can understand it. You know, we talked about it. We talked about why we was going on. Um, there were several kids in that locker room, along with my coaches who had been in that locker room, who I had done, had to fight for in the past, you know, and, our, and, and, and stood up for. And so they understood that point. They understood that, you know, that there was something that I had to do, and they were supportive. I received many texts from many of the players supporting that decision. You say that you've had to fight for several of your players in the past for other situations mm -hmm. or instances. By that, do you mean suspensions or you mean matters of disciplinary action? Just, just go to battle. The difference of opinions between myself and the district and, and what, had to be, what I thought needed to be done. In making this decision to leave before the game, were you worried at all or was a part of the decision-making process the idea that you would be letting down the other kids who still had to play in the game? Um, that came, that, that played heavily into it. Um, and again, the support from them was unbelievable. But I also have a very good coaching staff under me that I knew that they could continue on and they would continue on. I mean, I'm the head coach, but I also have an offense coordinator, a defense coordinator, and guys that have been around for numerous years that could carry on. And, and I knew that. I mean, when I'm, we're at practice, we're in the games, I mean, I, over, you know, I make decisions and stuff like that. But in terms of the X's and O's, it's done by other people on staff. I, I want to know what message you felt like you sent by resigning in support of him. Well, the message is not so much even in everything is, is we have to look at things differently nowadays. We have to look at kids differently. We can't just look at a manual or, or a code of conduct and make decisions off of that. We have to look, speak with kids. We have to see what's going on, what's happening. Um, you know, you look all around us. You look through th social media. You look at you know, TV, you watch what these kids are watching on TV now, social media, like I said, in the world around us, in everything these kids are coming off of, that we need to look more and to talk to the individual. And that's necessarily doesn't have to be an automatic, this is it, a cut and dry no matter what. Let's look into this and, and what's going on, why? Out of curiosity, were you planning to leave the CNS program after this year anyway, or after next year anyway? Um, there was actually a... I probably six, seven months ago, I started discussing it with my athletic director that it was about time. I mean, this is a group of seniors that I wanted to see finish off that I've been coaching for numerous years. So, I mean, I wouldn't say we were probably at a 95% chance that I was going to retire at the end of the season anyhow this year. So, you know, unfortunately, this is not the way I wanted things to end. But I needed to, again, I think I needed to stand up and, and do what I think according to my values was right. Was right. Understood. Um, you know, as, I'm, oh, go I'm, ahead. I'm sorry, but in terms of that, I also feel, you know, I'm not trying to say that there shouldn't be consequences for actions. You know, I'm not trying to say, well, kids should do things wrong and get off scot-free, but I think we, again, those consequences, they need to be investigated. You know, we need to go through thoroughly with them, you know, and then use those consequences as a chance to teach the kids and teach the children to do the right things or to, to make better decisions in the future. Right, and that's honestly, I think, the heart of this and what I'm trying to figure out from you as well because, like you said in your words, it's not to say that kids shouldn't be disciplined or that there shouldn't be consequences for their own actions, but in this situation, you felt that the disciplinary action was too harsh. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what I'm curious about is how do you figure out, like on the one hand, I feel like as a coach and as a former athlete myself, mm -hmm you know, the job is to like be able to explain to them that if you do something wrong, then there should be consequences and whatnot. And then at the same time, if it's too harsh, you know, be able to stand back and stand up for that too. Um, I want to know why, why at the heart of it, that line was drawn where this consequence was too much. Was it because of the player? Was it because of the actual action itself or his role on the team? What was it? I think, I think it's just a cum cumulative, cum Cumulative, cumulative uh, 
effect of, of, of time, of you know different things that have happened. And, um, and then when this came about, I think it was just, just the way it's, everything happened in my opinion so suddenly, so quickly, um, in terms of the consequences that I just didn't think it was the right decision to make. And that, that's why I had decided that this is the time to draw that line. Moving forward, will you coach again? Probably not, and if I do, it might be coaching some little modified kids someplace and having some fun where it's not a head coach of a major program or anything else like that. Um, you know, and with that being said, you know, I know we're talking about the stuff with the consequences. There were still many positive things that happened. It's, you know, I don't want to make it sound like coaching out at Cicero North Syracuse High School was a, a battle that was fought every day and, and that everything was negative. It isn't. There was still a lot of positives that took place out there as well. Absolutely. And again, like you mentioned, sometimes it's just a difference of opinion. Yeah. What would you say to the leaders and administration who said, we have a student handbook. This was the punishment based on what we saw or what someone mm -hmm. had told us. And that's the way that it is. I would say just take the time, speak to people, speak to the kids, talk to the families, you know, it's, and, and understand the level of, of how what the what the action was and if it was really that bad to to deserve those consequences i mean i look at myself i don't i'm one of the probably one of the few coaches i don't have a set of rules like i don't have written rules for my players because i know that every single player is different and they come from different circumstances different things happen and you got to be willing to to adapt to those circumstances and to teach those kids at the same time. You know, just because you don't, you adapt a little bit doesn't mean you're still not teaching discipline, you're not teaching respect. You can still do all those things. Um, I mean, yeah, listen, I, I guess I'll, outside of that, I'll just say open the floor for, is there anything else that, that you want to say or that you feel like was misunderstood in this situation or just anything else that you would like no, to say? No, I'm just, you know, like, again, I'd like to commend the, the other kids that went out there and played last night. You know, those kids suffered through, those kids went through a lot, you know, and, and they had a lot of uh, adversity the last couple of days. You know, they lost their quarterback, they lost their head coach, yet they went out there and fought with everything that they had. You know, and you got to give them, got to compliment them on that. You know, and those kids also backed their quarterback. You know, they supported him all along, you know, because when they go through a battle, when you go through a season and you're working together, some of these kids been three years together, four years together, that you learn that you need to support each other and you learn more about, learn, learn, learn a lot about each other. Were there any kids or any parents who had reached out to you and said, you know, I do wish that you were there that night for the game? Well, I had a lot of them just nice text messages. That, nothing that says, you know, like any blaming, all supportive. Those are all the questions that I got. Right. Thank you. Right, thank thank you. you. I appreciate you coming in and taking the time. It means thank a lot. You.